did somebody say free? Yes, in this video, we're breaking down my 10 most used free plugins of 2020. These are AUV3 plugins that you can use in GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad or any other, in fact, Cubasis, Aurea, AUM, whatever you're using, these are gonna be free plugins to help your music creation. Let's jump in, shall we, without any further ado, and uh, check these out. Now, you can follow along at home because we have a page on my website, this one here, studiolivetoday.com slash free AU. That's where you can go, and in fact, it looks a little something like this. You'll be able to get a full list of up updated it. It's in alphabetical order now, and you'll be able to go in there and check out all of the free AU plugins that you can check out. There's download links there, and there's videos for the ones that I have a specific video on as well. Let's crack on. We're one minute in. Time's a waste, and let's check out number 10 on this list, and uh, we'll come back over. Nope, there we are. Number 10 on this list is, drumroll please, this one. Yes, it's it's Nembrini's world, we're just living in it. So it's the Nembrini Analog Rack Chorus from Nembrini Audio. And uh, <clears throat> spoiler alert, we may be hearing from Nembrini a couple of times in this list. So this is just a really effective and useful chorus that we have and are able to use here in GarageBand or wherever else that you are adding a chorus effect. But let's not just talk about it, let's show it, shall we? So if we... Uh, if we pop this down out of the way, come on, come on, you can do it. There we go. We should be able to jump in here and have a quick look at it on the iPad because we're all set up here and ready to go. So let's grab, say, this lead guitar here and let's take a look and a listen to this chorus sound. There's our guitar. So let's uh, let's just turn this sucker up, shall we? We'll turn off the automation on this so that we can actually uh, we can actually turn it up, turn it up to eleven. So we got our lead guitar. Sounds pretty cool, yeah. But it can use a little bit of uh, a little bit of loving. So let's come in here and add some chorus. We'll come in here, plugins and EQ. We'll go edit. Uh, we'll get rid. Oh, we're gonna have to remove one. We're gonna have to lose the track reverb to add the chorus. We'll come in here, audio unit extensions. And if we go down to the Nembrini section, here it is, the analog rack chorus. Why do I love Nembrini? They're just simple. Yeah, okay, we'll do that later, Nembrini. They're just simple. So all we've got here is an input, an output, our rate, and our depth. So it's a really simple way, but you can get some really nice chorus tones in here. You want to play some uh, some Come As You Are Nirvana covers? You can do it here. Let's hit play. <laughs> Suddenly sounding like a bit of a horror movie. Uh, let's go to a bit where we got a little bit more melodic. <laughs> so really cool sound. Great on things like your organ sounds, on your vocals, on your guitars. Experiment with this one. It's very cool. And you know what? Something had to come in number 10. So that's where that's where Nembrini has landed on this one. What do you reckon? Have you tried the Nembrini plugin? In fact, what is your favorite plugin of 2020? We will be jumping in. We do have folks here live. Thank you for being here live if you are watching this one. Alex, Scott, Gino, Tom, Jade, Ani G, a uh, bunch of folks in the house, Tom and Co, Benedict Stewart. Thank you, everyone. For being here, we will have a, a bit of a Q&A section at the end of this and find out your favourites. But uh, to help those out on the replay, let's continue on and jump in to number nine here on the list. So we'll go back to my, we'll go back to the ones I prepared earlier. Let's just uh, spread this out there so it covers that one up. Uh, <laughs> I had to also uh, cover up the, the, see, I've added all these extra tabs because I realised that you'd be able to see all the names of them and we don't want any spoilers. We don't want you to cheat. I don't even have them in the description yet, but they will be down there at the end of the show. Let's go in. You can already see it there. Let's go into number nine and it is... Tape Cassette 2. Now, this is uh, the follow-up to Kalem Audio's Tape Cassette 1, or Tape Cassette. And it's very similar, but it just has a few additional options, as well as a better-looking interface. The first one, and I say this with love, the first interface looked like garbage. The new one looks really good. So uh, let's come in here and take a look at this one now. What should we use to uh, to have a look at tape cassette? Uh, why don't we just add something random here? We'll just add a drummer track. So we'll hit the plus button here and we'll add a drummer. 
Uh, because uh, maybe we could use Maya, our modern 80s, get a little bit of lo-fi 80s sound going on here. So if we just uh, solo Maya, we'll be able to take a listen to this tape cassette plug-in. So there's Maya doing her thing, right? So let's, uh, let's come in here and take a look at the tape cassette. So we want to dirty this up. That's nice, but it's a wee bit clean, yeah? We want to dirty Maya up a little bit. We can come in here, grab a plug-in, audio unit extensions. We're going to come on down to tape cassette two. There we go. Uh, and here you go. We can jump in here. Very simple sort of layout here. You've got uh, your saturation, low pass, noise, your wow, your flutter, and your output there as well. So uh, there's a bunch of different things that you can do in here. A lot of things you can play around with. It's got some presets going on here. So let's, for instance, uh, go with uh, some presets. What if we go with some lo-fi here? Oh, I missed it. I've got nice recording. We want lo-fi. So we've added a lo-fi. It adjusts all of those settings for us. And we hit play. See, a little bit more, uh, a little bit dirtier. Let's just play around with these. Uh, the wow and flutter are the most interesting ones and the tape noise. I still find it funny that we want to add tape noise. We want to add hiss back into our tracks. We spent decades trying to get rid of it, but let's turn up the hiss on this. Yeah. So you don't want too much of that, but it can be fun. And the wow. You get a really different sound, can't you, when you add in a bunch of wow. What about the flutter? You can hear there that just adding this, we'll get rid of that noise, just adding this can really help out. And you know what? Even if you don't want any wow or flutter, just using it as a pure saturation plugin, just for a little bit of analog tape warmth, can actually work really well as well. So if we crank up the saturation, that's a little too much. But you can hear the difference. It's a bit too, like fresh there. It's a bit fresh and digital. We want to rub it in the analog dirt. Just a little saturation and it can work a treat. So again, <laughs> this is a great plugin and it has to come ninth because we've just got so many great free plugins at the moment. And by the way, these are my most used plugins. So not all of these were released in 2020. Some of these came out in 2018 and 2019, but I'm going to put them here because I use them all the time. Um, and Gino Therese here in the chat says, whoop, 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 didn't want to do that. It says, reminds me of my old dual cassette deck. Yeah, how many people had the dual cassette decks where you dub from one tape? I mean, that you'd legally copy your own recordings from one tape to another, right? Uh, I need a quick coffee break and then we'll jump in to number eight. Because we've got so little time here, but we've got so much to get through. So let's... Uh, Let's jump on over here. Whoops, I'm using the wrong keyboard. Wrong keyboard, Pete. <laughs> Too many keyboards going on here. All uh, right, back over to our Safari link, which is over here. Boom. All right, let's move on to number eight. And number eight is, told you they'd be back. Yes, the Crunk V2 from our friends at Nembrini. And uh, this is a very cool one. This is a free AUV3 amp sim. I want to say it was the first free AUV3 amp sim on uh, as, as on iOS at all. Uh, we've now since got others, which we may talk about in a moment, but Crunk was definitely the OG. And uh, yeah, it's a very, very cool app. Once again, all of these are linked down in the description. There's a video down there as well as the download link to where you can check them out. So let's uh, let's check this one out real quick because we're very low on time. Uh, I'm going to be like a talk show host. We've got time, we've got enough time, any time. So let's grab a guitar sound here, shall we? And uh, see, these guitars are already on, uh, they're already on guitar amps here in GarageBand. But let's find one that we can play around with. Why don't we use this one, the rhythm guitar this time. And at the moment, it sounds like this. We'll just bring that into the middle so we can hear it. And again, we'll turn off the automation moves I should have done earlier. So that's pretty cool, yeah. You can use the, the there's nothing wrong with the GarageBand amp sims at all. They are really, really good. But what we can actually do is if we create a new track, so let's uh, come down here. I'm going to run out of tracks real quick, can't I? We'll come in here. Now, if we create just a standard audio recorder, our fun, our clean, so we've just got a regular clean audio track here. What we can do, if we bring this one up right down under, down under our guitar, Let's just copy a little piece of this guitar from here and we'll copy it and we'll paste it into 
this clean track. And I'll show you what we can do with this free. Again, all of these, zero dollars, zero pounds, zero British euro. No, that's not right. <laughs> zero euros. Uh, it's very, very cool. So if we bring this in here, you'll hear that now we've just got a regular, this is our, this is our clean guitar sound, right? I mean, it's all right. When I wake up, where like, no. Um, it's all right, but we need, to, uh, we need to add something to this. So the beauty part is that we can now come into our plugins and EQ and we can add in anything we like, including the epic Nembrini Crunk V2. So there's the Crunk V2. It's pretty simple in its interface. Yes, Nembrini, we love you. Uh, we've got gain control. We've got bass, mids, and trebles, master presence and output. It's a very basic amp setup, but it works a treat. And we've got factory presets too. So if we want a bit more of a lead sound, we can throw that on. And now take a listen to our guitar. Ooh, hello. And we can control it again with our gain here. Output. So it's instantly given us a very cool guitar tone. We can then come in here, say we want more of a crunchy tone. We can go with that. Nice. What about, uh, oh, back to our factory presets. What about uh, a cleaner tone? Yeah, we can go clean. Right. You can drive your gain if you want a higher gain sound or turn your gain right down. How good's that? It's often said that it's easy to get a, <laughs> sorry, someone's British Euros, I know. Um, yeah, I didn't, didn't do that well. Uh, it's, sometimes it's, it's good to judge a guitar amp sim based on its clean tones because getting a dirty, distorted tone is actually quite simple. To get a good quality clean tone can be hard. And like you saw there, just throw the clean preset on here, turn your gain down and you get a very nice. And again, if we just turn it off, there it is off. It just sounds like that. Turn it back on. Right? Anyway, it's cool. Go and download it. Uh, again, all these are free. You can get them all at uh, at the website, studiolivetoday.com slash free AU. If you're just joining us now, that's the place you need to go. This one here, studiolivetoday.com slash free AU or... Uh, after the show, you can check the description here. But if you want to play along at home right now and start downloading these, head over to the website, whether you're here live or on the replay. We're going to get a move on because we're already 12 minutes in and we've only done three and we need to get through seven more. So uh, let's, uh, let's jump on over. We'll go back to our list. Next up, number seven. Yeah, stereo lag time. Now this one... It's probably been my favorite plugin of the last two years because it does one thing and it does it exceptionally well. I put a poll out on my channel and this one got a lot of love and a lot of votes because it is just simple, but it's super effective and it can really thicken up your sounds in a really good and interesting way. Let's show you how it works. This time, why don't we go with some vocals? So we'll grab my vocal track on this song, which is uh, down here, and we'll solo these suckers and... Life is long and you have much time. You're in a rush and you Okay, not a bad sounding vocal, right? Got some already got some effects on there, already sounding good. In fact, we're gonna have to <laughs> we're gonna have to remove my enhanced tuning. Oh no, we'll get rid of effect EQ. So we'll get rid of effect EQ because what we want to do is we want to add in this plugin. We want to add in the stereo lag time. Now, what stereo lag time does is it delays, it lags one of your stereo channels. It's as simple as that. And what that creates is a thicker fuller sound. So instead of you having to do the old trick of duplicating out your track and, and panning it left and right and separating them out a little bit, this does all that for you. So this is like an automated version of that, but it all does it on one track and it does it with one very easy to use plugin. So we'll go in here, we'll go audio unit extensions. We will come on down to stereo. Come on down to stereo lag. There we go. Blue Mangoo stereo lag. And we'll tap on this. Here you go. Who loves, hands up, who loves a one dial plug-in? One knob to rule them all. So at the moment, it's off and it's not doing anything. And you don't know why you want it. But take a look what happens. We can either go left or we can go right. And we can go a small delay, a few samples, right up to milliseconds and all the way up to 250 milliseconds, which is two and a half seconds. Is that how it works? It's something like that. 
I could ne- I never do the calculation because milliseconds is a kind of weird one. It's not hundreds. It's te- anyway. Uh, we'll, we'll do this. So we'll hit play. It all and you Move it to the right. Now, but you doubt your talent and you don't know how. Move it to the left. Look around at what others do. Get that separation, Think yeah. It's easy, so why not you? <laughs> but but success, success is an overnight, overnight so, so if you, if you want, want to win, you're gonna, you're gonna have, have to fight. Hold on. So I tend to find that setting it sort of somewhere around that 10 milliseconds gives you that nice stereo separation. Let's just take a listen to this. Hold on. It's gonna be a long time. Or you can get sort of that more slap back kind of style with just a few samples like this. Time, hold on, hold on. So this is good for just thickening up your vocal, getting that doubled vocal effect. This is good for more of a, if you want more of a panning effect. So if you've got a couple of guitars and you want to really play with the stereo spectrum. And then of course, you can go nuts and put it all the way out here and get this sort of delay effect. Because it's going to be a long, long time. Hey! So it's really, it's really delaying it there when you get it out there. It's like basically a second delay. Uh, so that is stereo lag time. Again, one thing done really well, I, uh, I tend to love because uh, it's simple. Simple is better sometimes. So uh, uh, hello again to the folks uh, that are here live. We've got Phil who's joined us. Roland's in here. Ed Zed in the house. Uh, and uh, Tom Sawyer. The old Tom Sawyer. We've got Stu. We've got Andy. Hello, folks who are here live. We will have a bit of a quick uh, quick chat and Q&A and find out your favorite plugins right as we get to number one. So hang out because that should be a lot of fun. Let's uh, continue on, shall we? And go on to number six. Number six is... Told you they'd be back. Yeah, my favorite delay plugin, the Nembrini Audio. I just love saying Nembrini Audio. Analog Rack Delay. Excuse me. Needed to clear the throat. The analog rack delay from Nembrini, as I uh, go through puberty, live on air. Uh, the analog rack delay from Nembrini is just the coolest delay going around. Great for your guitar tones, great for vocals, great for everything. But let's not just talk about it. Let's show it in action. Now, what should we use? What shall we use for this one? Uh, we've got, we'll take that off focal. Actually, I'll take the, <laughs> I better do some cleaning up as I go along. Otherwise, this is going to become a hot mess of various different plugins. Uh, why don't we use the vocal again? Because uh, what we can do is we can turn off the uh, the delay that we already have on this plugin. So let's just turn off the echo just so that we don't have anything conflicting. We'll leave the reverb on there. But we'll come in here and we'll add the analog. Because this is the thing. You can use this on your guitar. Like it's pretty simple. It's a great guitar effect. But it's also a really cool effect for anything else. For an organ, for a keyboard, for a vocal. So if we come in here and we grab the analog rack delay from Nembrini. Open it up. Uh, yes, Nembrini, we love you. And here it is. So again, input and output. This time you've got a few more because you need a little bit more, uh, a little bit more finesse here. But you've got time, you've got offset, offset, you've got feedback, and you've got mix. Once again, we've got factory presets. So here's the cool thing. You can dial this into a quarter note or an eighth note or a sixteenth note delay. So that's kind of cool because that way it will actually sync in with your audio. See this little sync button? You can sync it in there with your audio. So that's why this is cool. It gives you both options. So let's show you the sync option first. Say we wanted a nice, uh, simple quarter note delay on this vocal. We hit the quarter note delay and see what happens there? It uh, actually did it. They put it to an eighth. That's weird. I did quarter note delay and it put it to a one eighth delay there. Uh, might be a small bug there. What if I do eighth note delay? Okay. Oh, no, that, that's cool. It's a, The quarter note has got the... Yeah, there it is. It worked that time. I don't know what I did. That was weird. All right. So, uh, did I mention free? Yeah, sometimes you get a few little a few little gremlins. Uh, but let's just play this one and listen to this quarter note delay. Life is long, Life is long and you have, you much, have time. much time. You're in a You're rush, in a rush. And Now, that's cool, yeah, but that's too intense. And that's where your mix knob comes in. So, all we need to do is drop the mix of this down. And this is cool. Having a, having a plug-in that has a mix knob makes it super handy. We can play it now. You don't know why you want it all and you want it now, but you doubt your... Pretty cool, yeah. And then we can change this up. So if we wanted it to be an eighth note delay instead. Your talent and you don't know how. Really great for guitar solos. Not that I would know because I don't play guitar solos. Uh, and then, of course, you've got your offset here and you've got your feedback. So you can play around with those to get... Look around at what others do. To get more like ridiculous spacey effects and you can turn your sync off and this is where it's cool because you can turn the sync off and then you can drive in milliseconds so you want that you want that nice Beatles slapback delay that they use in a lot of theirs well you can just throw like a maybe like a 10 millisecond delay on here and 
Think it's easy, so why not you? But success is... All right, I've got to, I've got to change these offsets and feedback because I've got too much going on there. Uh, something like that. This isn't overnight, so if you want to win, you're gonna have to fight. Hold on, hold on. So again, similar to that stereo lag, if you use it subtly, you're gonna get a very different kind of sound. You're gonna get more of that slapback delay as opposed to the long tail delay. So your guitars and your more extreme instruments, you might want the long tail. Using it on vocals, maybe just dial in, you know, 12 milliseconds, you know, up to 50 milliseconds, and you're gonna get... Um. It's gonna be a long time. You're gonna get that doubled vocal effect without the effort of a doubled vocal, right? Doesn't that deserve a sip of coffee? I think it does. Well, we did that. We always do that. All right, let's uh, let's jump on over to our next one because we got so much more to go through. We're not even in the top five yet, or are we about to be? <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Yeah. Here comes the top five. So let's jump in and go to number five. Ba -dum -ba -dum -boom, boom -ba -dum. It is my wife's favorite plugin name of all time. She can't quite believe that there is a plugin called The Rough Rider. In fact, it's the third iteration of The Rough Rider. It is The Rough Rider 3. And The Rough Rider 3 is a compressor, but this ain't your grandma's compressor, and I don't know why I always pick on grandma's. But Rough Rider, by the nature of its very name, is going to dirty your stuff up a little bit. So let's come in and uh, and check it out. What should we do it on this time? Um, what about an acoustic guitar? No, that's no. No, we've got to got to go back to our electric guitar, don't we? All right, let's uh, let's come in here and take a look at this on an electric guitar. Here we go. We'll once again use our rhythm guitar. Now this time we're going to use it on this original. And don't forget, all of these plugins can be used on your master. If you're using something like Cubasis or Aurea, it can be on your whole master bus. So you, if you love Rough Rider so much like I do, you can throw it on really subtly on your master of your entire mix and you can get a bit of that Rough Rider magic on there. But let's take a look at what it actually does here. So here is, uh, we'll go to a bit where we've actually got a bit more guitar going on. Something like this down here. Yeah, we'll play it down here where we've got these power chords being played here. So we can go to the edit button and once again hit the plus. Go to audio unit extensions. Come on down to Rough Rider. And you can notice here we've got Rough Rider 2 and Rough Rider 3. They kind of do the same thing. But uh, the third one is just more newer and has a better interface. So here it is, Rough Rider from Audio Damage. So once again, preset to your friend. You can play around with these to uh, work out what's actually going on. So we've got nice start, full metal, just a bit off the top. Like they've got some pretty cool names. Waffle Stomper. Nice. Let's just go with just a bit off the top to start with as our plug-in. Oh, uh, there we go. Just a bit off the top, our preset. So you've got a bunch of things here. You can control your sensitivity. You can control your makeup gain here, your ratio of your compressor. You've got uh, side chaining if you're using something that can do that. You've got attack. You've got release. But again, the good thing with these, like, mo like your Nembrini, like your Clef Grind plugins, most of these will have your presets. So they'll have you covered, and then you can just tweak from there. So start with a preset if it's daunting looking at all of these knobs. No one likes to look at a no lot of knobs. All right. Right, let's uh, let's hit play on this one and see what the Rough Rider is doing. Right, you're just getting that that rub it in the dirt sound. Let's just compare this. If we turn the Rough Rider off, this is our sound. Turn it on. Hear how it's just bringing out the bass sound? Again, it's just a little off the top. Let's, however, go in with something a little bit more full metal, shall we? So if we throw full metal on here, you'll see it's changed it up a little bit. And now, here it's got that, that transformer sound in there. If we turn up the makeup game, so that's probably a little bit too crunchy for this. Again, you can go nuts with this and you can do it a bit much. Uh, what if we just go with like the, the New York Parallel compression? Let's see what that sounds like. This could be interesting. Let's hit play. Nice, yeah. And uh, you, know, you, can, you can mix it down. This is the other thing because it's got a mix knob here. You can fully on there.
So you can do everything from subtle little changes to complete changes. Now, I did say that it was good on vocals as well. So let's do a quick, quick, quick view on vocals. We'll just remove it here. Otherwise, I'm going to get, again, super duper confused. If we come down to the vocal that we were playing with before, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's good for, uh, for, again, rubbing your vocals in the dirt. So we'll take the delay off down here and we'll throw on our Rough Rider. And if you've just got a vocal, you ever got those vocals that you've recorded and they almost sound too good? As in like there's, they're, they're, too, they're too digital sounding, they're too clean. Well, grab yourself some Rough Rider 3 and rub them around in the dirt a little bit and you'll find that you get a better sound. Let's take a listen. Well, we need to get rid of that guitar, don't we? And the rest of the track. All right. So let's uh, come to here and we play. Thinking there's just nowhere to end. Looking sideways at other folks. Thinking you're the butt of everyone's jokes. But there's one lesson that I've learned. And there you go. You can just roll them around in the dirt. And uh, as Sasha here said, don't, don't forget that Rough Rider 3 has a side chain in AUM. Yes. So whilst side chain here, you've got side chain on off. Won't work in GarageBand because you don't have any send or receives. If you're using it in Cubasis, Aurea Pro, AUM, then yes, you can use side chaining. And if you don't know about side chaining, uh, Google it. <laughs> Just Google side chain in AUM or side chain Cubasis, side chain Aurea. I haven't covered them because I don't use side chaining much. It's more of an electronic music thing, really. There's not too much side chaining that goes on a lot, at least in, in sort of rock or pop music. Uh, but yeah, it's a cool feature if you want to play around with it. There you go, we're into the top four. Let's jump into four and then we'll take a quick break before and to explain a few things before we get into the top three free plugins that you can download for free right now. So let's uh, plug this over here. Um, wrong keyboard again, Pete. Get your stuff together, son. Need, I needed to have a second coffee before I started, clearly. Uh, let's just grab another quick coffee while we get back to here. There we are. Number four plugin is... Boom. Yeah, yeah. It is Tonebridge. Tonebridge has done a lot of cool things this year. I only just really started using Tonebridge, uh, which is a bit weird um, because it just took me a while to get into it. But I covered it in a recent video. That'll be linked down in the description afterward. And it's also over at, uh, if, again, if you're just joining us, we've got a complimentary website. If you go here, studiolivetoday.com slash free AU, that's where you can check out all the links to these plugins to download them. But you can also watch my video on each one of them. So if you could have a great day of it. You could make a whole day of it. Just download a plugin, watch Pete's 10 minute overview video, and then go in and play with it for half an hour. You, got, you know, Boxing Day, day after Christmas, kids are kids are playing with their presents. Sit down and download a bunch of free apps and uh, and watch the videos and and learn what's cool about them. But Tonebridge is cool. Shout out to Jade Star. She finally convinced me. She said, Pete, just for goodness sake, just put Tonebridge on. Don't faff about with this other stuff. It's free and it's awesome. And uh, I, I happen to agree. So let's uh, let's jump in here and take a look at Tonebridge, shall we? So Tonebridge is for our guitarist, but again, not just guitar. You can use it on bass. In fact. Let's, let's give the bass guitar some love, shall we? We haven't uh, done anything with bass. So if we find my bass guitar, it is down here. What we'll need to do is turn off, we'll come in here, we'll go to Automaya Sean, and we'll turn that off just so that we can hear the bass guitar. And it sounds a bit like this. Not bad, yeah. It's, it's a bass guitar, and I'm using one of the standard bass amps here in GarageBand. So let's add a new track. We really are going to run out fast here, aren't we? And again, we'll add a fun, clean track because whenever you're using an AUV3 plugin, you want just an absolutely clean audio track. You want no processing and no effects on it at all. And we'll bring this one back up. We'll pop it there under the bass track and uh, let's just copy this bass down. So we'll copy this bass sound that was on this original amp track. Amp track, not to be confused with Amtrak, who I think are the train company in America. I could be wrong. Anyway, so now if we listen to this, it's going to just sound... That's my complete, that's just my bass sound, yeah? Boring. We need to, uh, we need to fix it. We must fix it. So we'll come in here, we'll go to plugins and EQ, we'll go edit, and uh, this time we're going to hit plus and add in some Tonebridge love in our lives. 
Tonebridge. There it is. We'll tap it on here. It's had some improvements lately to fix a few things as well. So there were some issues with the AUV 3-ness uh, of keeping the plug-in settings in there. Every time you changed it, it would revert to them. So you'd have to uh, you'd have to uh, merge the tracks down here in GarageBand at least. That's all been fixed. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, we've got, uh, we've got, no, not presets. That's not what I wanted to. We could actually change this. So at the moment, it's using this Blink-182 damn it uh, sound. So that's not going to sound too great on a bass, is it? Oh, it kind of does, actually. That kind of sounds cool. But anyway, let's let's find something that's going to be more of a bass sound. So let's say if we wanted something like a bit of a Metallica bass. Here's why this is so cool. You can just type in, you can type in search terms here, and it's going to find you stuff. So let's say that if we want the uh, For Whom the Bell Tolls intro on bass, this is replicating the tone that you hear in the intro for Metallica's For Whom the Bell Tolls. So if we bring this in, and how cool is that? I love that the pedal has the little uh, sort of album art thing on there. If we play this one now. Oh, wow. <laughs> right? Nice, yeah. We want something a bit more classic. What if we, uh, what's someone, what's the classic? What if we want like a bit of a, do we have some cream? Like a bit of uh, Eric Clapton's old band? Uh, yeah, look at that. We've got the bass sounds from something like Cocaine. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm going to get a copyright strike now. I'm just talking about the song. <laughs> All right, uh, we hit play on that one. So there you go. Now you've got more of a traditional bass tone. Or you can pump it up. So it's a simple and effective way to get bass, to get your bass tones in here. And but obviously electric guitar tones, I didn't even touch them. Let's oh, we've got to do it quickly. Let's quickly do an electric guitar tone because we've already got this track here set up. So we'll just switch over to electric and play it here. Now we've got the Nembrini. You've served us well, Nembrini, but you're coming off. See you, Nembrini. All right. Instead, let's grab Tone Bridge, shall we? And boom. Now it's already got this this effect on here, but I want more of a uh, I want more of a Pearl Jam uh, kind of a live tone here. So let's search Pearl Jam Alive. There it is. Right. Can you see the power of this? Uh, again, free. There's a whole community behind it. You can create your own tones. You can do your own pedal boards. Uh, yeah, just kind of ridiculous that you have this sort of power in your guitar amp sims for free. Again, <laughs> you use Nembrini, Crunk, and Tonebridge. And I mean, yeah, I think people like IK Multimedia and uh, and others have got their work cut out for them because, yeah, you can really create a lot of cool guitar sounds for a very long time without spending a cent. So, uh yeah, loving, loving me some Tone Bridge and uh, finally took the plunge and started using it and uh, haven't looked back because I'm a lazy, lazy man <laughs> and having the ability to just throw Tone Bridge on without having to think about it really does help me out. Uh, there you go. Exactly. Lars is getting ready to file a lawsuit because I mentioned, mentioned the word. <clears throat> Yeah, I won't even say it again. Alrighty, we're getting close here. We're into uh, getting close to the top three. Yes, the top three plugins that I've used. Top three free plugins that I have been loving in 2020. And once again, uh, if you want to check out all of the free plugins, there's a website right there. You can go there right now and it has all of them. There's about 35 of them. They're all cool. I, I don't include the ones that are a bit naff. To be honest, if I try one out and I'm like, there is literally no use for this, I don't include it. Or if it's got a clunky, like a, an interface that doesn't work or something broken in it, they're not there. But everything else is there and there are a heap for you to check out if you've spent all of your Christmas dollars on Christmas presents or, or uh, anything else this year, you can go and check those out. Alrighty, let's come in to da -da -da -da. it's the final countdown. So there was number four. What is going to be number three? Coming in at number three with a bullet, it is, yeah, they're back. All right, so the Analog Rack Noise Gate from Nembrini. I know this is a bit guitar heavy, and don't worry, we have some other non-guitar stuff in a minute, but the Analog Rack Noise Gate from Nembrini, it is like the GarageBand Noise Gate or any other noise gate, but it has the all-important second dial, 
and it's super important if you've got a high gain guitar tone. Now, I don't have my guitar plugged in, so it's going to be a wee bit difficult to actually demonstrate this here, but we'll give it a crack anyway. So we'll come on over here. Now, in fact, what we might need to do is we might need to find a really, we'll crank up a really high gain tone. Maybe we can use Tone Bridge and just really turn up this uh, Pearl Jam tone here. Oh, hang on, we'll solo that. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to do. That's all right, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it. You can check out the video link to that'll be down in the description afterwards or over at the plugin website. But if we want to show what this does, we'll hit the plus button here. Now, we'll go audio unit extensions, analog rack, Nambrini, analog rack, noise gate. Now you might be saying to me, Pete, we have a noise gate, here it is. It's built in right here in GarageBand, but guess what? It only has a threshold. That means it's only ever on or off. Now a noise gate, what it does, is it determines when there is sound below a certain volume, it cuts it out. So if you're hearing that hiss, that background sound, it'll cut it out if it's under a certain volume. Now that's great if you've got that buzz, that hiss, that hum that comes with a lot of guitar sounds. But the problem here with the GarageBand noise gate and a lot of other noise gates, if they're one dial, it means they're only on or off. They're completely digital one way or the other. The good thing about this one, and what we can do is we'll edit it, we'll bring it up to the top here. Nope, you can't go ahead of noise gate. There you go. We'll bring it up to the top here, but we won't have that noise gate on. The good thing about the Nembrini noise gate is that we've got a threshold and a range. So this is the difference. So the difference here is with the Nembrini one, you can dial in your threshold here to tell it at what level you want the noise to cut out. But then instead of cutting it out completely, instead of turning it all the way off, you can say, actually only turn it down a bit. That way you're not getting that cutting in and cutting out sound. So if you've got vocals with background hiss, if you've got uh, guitars that have that hum in between chords when you're not actually playing them, this is gold. Now, if you want actual noise reduction, Bruce Free from Clev Grand. So you do need to pay for it. If you, All this will do is turn down the volume when a sound is not playing. It won't actually remove the background noise when a sound is playing, but if you've got noise before and after a sound, this will help you out. This will remove that noise before and after a sound. And because it's free, you really can't go wrong. I've recommended this to a lot of other folks, to, to, to podcasters, to uh, people doing videos, because imagine you're doing a video, every time you're topping and taking a breath, instead of you having to go and automate down the volume or use anything else, just throw the Nembrini noise gate on that. Like it's good for guitar, but spoken word audio. You can imagine why this works well, because if I'm just like, uh, welcome to Studio Live today, in this video, we're gonna do this. I just throw the noise gate on there and just turn down the volume whenever it gets below a certain level and we're golden. So it's a little hard to, to, to show here without a guitar plugged in, but again, check out the video, go over to the website, studiolivetoday.com slash free AU and check out the video I did on this one because it's really, really handy and it's one of the more useful ones, which is why it has come in at number three on our top 10 countdown. We're into the final two, who's excited? Who thinks they know what's coming in two and one? Oh, there's, there's only a few left to go here. And uh, yeah, we'll see if we can guess them. So let's not beat around the bush, shall we? Let's jump into number two. And number two, for those that know me in the channel and know what I like, we'll probably reveal number one because there's two in your head right now. I'm sure many of you are thinking these two. Number two is something that has kind of changed my world in the last year. And I used to spend a lot of time trying to get some really nice stereo width using multiple tracks and panning, and it, it took a long time to do this. And then Infected Mushroom came along and gave me wider. And this is a game changer. So this is a stereo width plugin, a stereo widener, and it just works. And again, one knob plugin, one dial, one slider, you really can't go wrong when you've only got one slider because it's just simple. It's easy to use. It's a game changer when it comes to getting a nice stereo spread within your sound. So let's stop talking and actually show what it does. So again, we'll grab this guitar that we've been focusing in on here today. Um, we might need to turn down that tone bridge tone again now because we tried to we tried to explode it. Uh, so we'll just turn that one down and, and we'll turn off the noise gate too. And we'll uh, take off the automation so we can turn it up. 
cool, yeah? Now, I've got multiple guitars in this track, but let's just say that was my one guitar track. That's all I've recorded here, and that's it. Well, guess what? I can actually get some cool stereo width. I can create my own wall of guitars, and it doesn't have to just be guitars. In fact, we'll, use, we'll show this on a piano as well So uh, after this, so you can see that if you're not a guitar person, it doesn't matter. It's not just for guitars. But if we come in here, we're going to go to edit, we're going to tap this on, and we're going to go wider. Now, I know many people said, when I did the poll, many people said wider has changed their lives as well because it's just a quick and simple way to get some stereo width. So here you go. It is this. And look, it is one thing. We just say how much stereo width, anywhere from zero to 100, or you can actually go into this weird extra spectrum up to 200. So let's just uh, dial this up, and I'll show you, or you can hear what it sounds like when we add wider into this sound. <laughs> Right? It just, it literally just, it, it does, what it's showing on the screen is exactly what it's doing in reality. Let's keep going. How cool is that? Now you might be thinking, Pete, can't you just grab it and put it, you know, on two tracks and pan it hard left and hard right? You can't. That doesn't actually create stereo width. That just gives you two copies. That just doubles the amplitude of the sound. It makes it twice as loud. You need a plugin like this, like Wider, to actually do that because it's not just adding it to both sides. It's adding in some uh, some very small, insignificant amounts of delay to make it actually have that stereo width. Let's go past the 100 now. I know, we're turning it up. It's like turning the flux capacitor and needing the 1.21 gigawatts. Let's do it. <laughs> So once you go past 100, you kind of get that phasey kind of effect. It kind of does some weird stuff in there. So I tend to use it a bit more subtly. So if I have a guitar sound like this, I'll throw it on. And probably set it about there. So probably set it around the 24%. But yeah, if you really want to go with a different kind of effect sound, you can... Uh, right? Bring it into our mix. Now we've done a whole bunch of things to a whole bunch of tracks, so the overall mix is going to sound pretty terrible. But uh, yeah, you can hear there that it just it widens it out, and again, it's such a simple thing, but it works so well. Let's throw it on a piano, shall we? Or maybe an, uh, maybe the electric piano, because uh, this th these work really well when you've got some width on them. So let's just see if this section here. Yeah, here. So we'll put it on these these chords that it's playing here. First of all, we'll uh, put this in the middle uh, so that it's centered. There you go. Uh, so we'll come in here and again, we'll add the wider plugin. Boom, boom. I really hope I made a backup copy and this isn't my original track. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> Let's come down here to wider. Wider and wider. All right, so we'll jump into wider and now we'll play this. We'll play this E piano and then again, we'll stretch out the width. Right? There you go bit further it's like going into places where your ears shouldn't be it's like out back here now isn't it how cool is it let's go all the way it's in a different it's in a different dimension it's like somehow behind me bring it back to the real world and then bring it in back to its boring origins right very cool. Again, I can't, <laughs> you can tell how excited I am about this plugin and how much it's changed things. Because again, the challenge with getting good stereo width is if you've got only, say you've got a six or seven or eight track song, as soon as you start panning things left and right, you lose that balance. Sometimes you just, you don't necessarily want them to be on the left or the right. You just want them to be wider. And that's exactly what this plugin does. It's exactly what it's called, and it's exactly what it does. 
You want wider, you get wider. <laughs> All righty. Uh, if you're getting some value out of this one, if you're having some fun here on this countdown, please uh, hit the like button. That just tells me and the YouTube robots that you're having fun and you're enjoying this countdown. And as uh, as Joey Helpish says, it's all about girth. Uh, what will it do on a vocal? You know what? Because you've asked me, because you're a, you're a fine, fine man, David Hoiber, I uh, can almost pronounce your name now. Uh, let's just try it on a vocal because it does work pretty well on a vocal. And we do have a couple of minutes uh, spare up our sleeve here. So just for you, let's uh, come and take a listen on a vocal. So we'll grab, oh, that's not my vocal, that's my guitar. Here we go. Here's our lead vocal down here. And we'll uh, turn this on. We'll have to take off the Rough Rider. Oop. By the way, your plug-in order is important. So something like wider, you'd probably put towards the end. Like compressors, you'd probably put towards the front. Something like wider, you'd probably put towards the end after your reverbs and your delays and things. So keep that in mind that you can adjust your, your plug-in order, even GarageBand, Incubases, whatever you're using, just to like edit here, and we can drive this down and pop it wherever we want. So we'll put it at the very bottom here for this one. So here's wider. We will uh, play the vocal. Life is long and, and you have it. much time. You're in a rush and you don't know why. Spread it more. You want it all and you want it now, but you doubt your talent and you don't know how. Look around at what other. And again, this can work really well. You combine this with stereo lag time and you can get some really cool effect. Just go subtle, like don't brought it all the way out here for your lead vocals, but just put it subtle. But you know what? I've used this for backing vocals like all the way out here with like a single backing vocal track and it sounds really cool and really full. You just have to be careful. Sometimes you get those phasey, those weird phasey kind of effects. But yeah, very cool, very good plug-in for your vocals as well. Yeah, good point. Thank you for asking that one. Alrighty, let's continue. <clears throat> let's continue. <laughs> Sorry, I got a good comment here from uh, from Ed. Uh, Ed says, uh, I, I turned on wider on my song and then when I tried to export it, it no longer fit on the screen. Hang on. I need, I need a rim shot just to play uh, for jokes just like that one. Alrighty, it is time. No more. No more waiting. The wait is over and it's time to reveal our number one plugin. Do you know what it is? Have you guessed it? Uh, the most used plugin on my tracks in 2020 for free is this one. Yes, it is the LRC5 from Neon Silicon. Now, this has been around for a lot longer than just this year. I think it was released in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. It is just the best, most useful, most valuable plugin for free that you can use on your tracks in iOS, in my humble opinion. And you know what? It's my countdown, so <laughs> that's what it is. But it is just, it is an EQ. It is a five-band parametric EQ. Why is it better than GarageBand's EQ? Why is it better than other EQs? I'm going to show you why. Because it is just it's simple, but it has power and flexibility. So let's come back and jump into this vocal. Again, we're running out of room here, so we're going to have to remove the enhanced tuning. <gasps> Pete's going to lose his auto-tune. We'll hit the plus button, we'll hit audio unit extensions, and we'll come in here to LRC5 from Neon Silicon. Now again, we'll tap the edit button and we'll move it because you generally, not always, but you generally want your EQ to be at the end of your chain. Now that's not always the case. Some people like to, some people say, why would I put reverb and overdrive and, and width plugins on, on the frequencies I don't want to keep in there anyway? That's a fair point. But for me, I've always gone the more traditional route, which is having it at the end of my chain. So uh, we'll put it here on the end of my chain. So in its simplest form, you got five bands here. So at the bottom here, you've got the ability to do a proper high pass filter or low cut filter. So this one is your, is your high pass filter. You can bring that down and that's gonna reduce your low end bass noises. So for something like a vocal, you're generally not gonna need anything below, you know, probably a hundred Hertz or at least below 50 Hertz. So this is sort of around there. Now look in the bottom right there, you can see the little tiny green numbers, hard to see on your screen now, but it's really easy when you're actually using the plugin. What you can do is you can see there that you can see that the numbers. So if I bring this up to say 100 hertz, which is around about there, and then drop it straight down, what I've now got is a 100 hertz low pass filter. So there's your first thing that you can do. You've then got up the top here, sorry, high pass filter. I always get those wrong. Low cut, high pass. You've also got at the top here the ability to do the same at the top end. So you can add some air by bringing it up there, or you can reduce the top end. So let's let's play this vocal, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, come back to the start here. And I'll just show you some of the things that these can do really, really quickly. So again, you're not going to hear much by bringing this down to start with, because 
there, there's not much noise at that frequency. But if you get some, you know, truck rumble outside, if you've got some low hum, you've got something in your vocal or in any tracks, this can really help. So let's hit play. Life is long and you have much time. You're in a rush and you don't know. So you can hear there that it's just kind of cleaned it up a little bit. I think so. Uh, and then you can sort of slide this up. So if we move this up, it's going to remove more and more of the bass frequencies. Let's try it. Oh, why? You want it all and you want it now, but you doubt your talent and you don't know how. Look Cool, yeah. So if you want to go for that uh, telephone kind of sound, let's just turn this vocal up, by the way. We'll take the automation off just so that you're going to be able to hear it a little better. We'll bring up the volume. So if you want to go for, like, you can use this for an effect. If you wanted, like, a telephone sound effect, you could just use that and bring it up here and you get that kind of AM radio with not much bass. Around at what others do. Think it's easy, so why not you? Uh, and then, yeah, at the top end, you can do the same thing if you've got too much high frequency or you can use it to add a little bit of air. Now, you've got your your other frequencies here in the middle. These are all... Um, the, oh, I've forgotten the name of these now. Oh, it's, uh, it's been a long it's been a long stream, 50 minutes. Uh, but you've got the ability to adjust these uh, up and down on the three different bands. And again, you can set these to anywhere you like. So you can move them left and right, up and down. But here's the key thing. Here's the, the killer feature. We can actually change the cue setting of these. So if we grab these and we grab two fingers and we spread our fingers apart, check that out. We can adjust the cue, which is the narrowness or the width of the bandwidth, to that and this is can do, do what we call notch filtering which means if you've got a frequency in your track that sounds really bad you can notch it out so what we can do let's try and find a bad frequency shall we we'll turn this all the way up we'll just uh, adjust these down uh, we'll turn this all the way up and we can sweep around and if we find a frequency that's just terrible we can actually notch it out so uh, we'll do that now let's play but success is an overnight so if you want to win you're gonna that one, yeah. So that frequency there, and if we look down the bottom there, that is around about 1500 hertz. So that's creating that kind of nasally kind of tone. So we can actually remove that. So if we play this back. Gonna have to fight, hold on, hold on. It's gonna be a long. And then you can actually use that to remove it down. So compared to, if, you, if you, we compare this to our regular EQ, again, all we've got, we have no Q control. All we've got is the ability to turn these up and down at different frequencies. And yeah, it's handy, but it's not as handy. It doesn't do the same things that we can do here because we've got no cue control. You don't really have a proper high pass filter or low cut filter at the bottom end there. And you don't have the flexibility that we have with the five bands that we have here on LRC5. So you can see here, you could, uh, you know, you can add a little bit of bass there. You could give it a little bit more there. You can come in here and you can select multiples at once and then move everything. So if you've got multiple things selected at once, you can move your whole frame, your, your whole waveform there, or you can do it one at a time. And let's say we've got another part here we want to cut. Again, we tap it, we spread two fingers apart. It creates a nice narrow cue, and then we can do some nice surgical upping and downing. We want a little boost up there on our vocal. Long time, hold on. Don't know why we would, but uh, yeah, you can do it, and it's got the complete flexibility. Hold on, cause it's gonna complete flexibility over all of your EQ controls. So what do you think? Is that a is that a deserving winner? Is LRC5 the deserving winner of our top 10 free AUV3 plug-in shootout here today? That's what I want to know now. We have about five minutes left. So uh, if you have any comments, uh, I know many folks have been uh, talking about things throughout the show and uh, I apologize. I haven't been as interactive as I usually can be, but we had so much to get through here today in such a short amount of time and I wanted to make sure all 10 of these plugins, you've got an idea of what they did, of how to use them, of what use they have. And now all that's left to do is for you to jump on over and go to this website here, studiolivetoday.com slash free AU, and you'll find all all of these plugins and more. There's about 35, 40 plugins listed there. All of the best free plugins that you can download and use in your GarageBand projects, Cubasis, Aurea, 
AUM, uh, whatever you're using, Beatmaker 3, anything that uses audio unit, AUV3, is going to be cool. Uh, Desolate Morning, catching the replay. Yeah, if you did miss the start, if you're just getting here at the end, jump back to the replay. After the show, or immediately, all of the links will go into the description. They're not there now because, spoiler alert, uh, so they'll go into the description so you'll be able to check those out. So do catch the replay, check all the links in the description so you can get, grab all of these apps, and then I'll also put timestamps in there. So again, if you're watching this in the future, you'll be able to jump in. Or if you want to come back and you want to just check one of these out, you're going to be able to check that out as well. Uh, Patrick Chandler says, I've had this app for some time now, but not used it much. I will be now. Absolutely. Yeah. LRC5 for the absolute win. It works very, very well. Uh, and uh, Tom Rochelle says, uh, yeah, it means using EQ to remove frequencies around 100 to 150 hertz. Yeah, so sorry, that's, um, if I didn't explain that very well, but a high pass filter just means you, or a low cut filter means you're cutting all the frequencies below about 100, 150 hertz. The reason you do that is no actual sound are there. Like if you think of the notes that you're playing, your notes, you know, your 440 hertz in that middle there is your, like your middle C, there aren't too many notes that you actually you want to hear it especially in vocals or guitars you want to make sure that you're not getting that because any noise that's happening down low is going to be uh is going to be not actually a guitar it's going to be a truck driving past or it's going to be a low rumble or something like that uh you can indeed by the way if you do want to support if you like this sort of content and you want to get a bit of behind the scenes you can become a supporter of studio live today on patreon just head to patreon.com slash pete johns and uh you can check that one out uh scott says thanks pete a bunch of cool apps on your list definitely use quite a bit of these frequently this year absolutely uh there's a lot of good stuff going on there thank you to dr zorders for being here uh thank you jade star for moderating as well as tom and scott and bubba and Zion and the other great moderators that we have around the channel here um, and uh, Dark Aum says, uh, thanks for the overview. Just got the Tonebridge app. Might be interesting for bass too, I hope. It really is. If you missed the review we did, uh, check that out. But it's really cool. It uh, has some really good bass sounds. And Desolate Morning says he has all of them. Uh, have all the apps I caught except Wider. Well, there you go. Grab Wider. You'll love it, my friend, uh, for some of those metal guitar sounds and some of those, uh, some of those uh, stereo spectrums that you want to grab. Uh, very, very cool. Righty dokey. I think we're nearly done. All that is left to do is let you know that if you uh, enjoy this sort of content, uh, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, because we're here every day. And tomorrow, in fact, we have Your Music Live Christmas Edition. So if you have a song that's in the Christmas theme or the holiday spirit, you can submit that one. All the details are here on the channel. Just search Your Music Live. You'll find the episode upcoming. And in 10 minutes, what is now four minutes, jump over to Jade Star's channel. She's going to be doing a show uh, on Grand Finale and Riff Writer. So a two for one. And yeah, I didn't mention any of the paid plugins. Maybe we should do a top 10 paid plugins. Maybe that's something for next week leading into the new year. We could do my 10 favorite paid plugins of 2020. Could be a lot of fun. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for all of your support. As we say at the end of every show here on Studio Life today, please be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Keep creating and rock on. See you folks. Take care.